Shalim Ortiz, thank you so much for uh, accepting the invite today. I know that we are in quarantine. Thank you so much, brother, for accepting the invite today. Thank you for having me, man. Uh, it's a pleasure. Wait, are you in New York right now? I'm in New York, yeah. I'm in New York. Um, I'm, um, I'm in Brooklyn, quarantining, uh, finishing up a, a TV show I started shooting late last year. And uh, yeah, on the, on the last few episodes of that. Nice, man. Exciting. Well, I wanted to jump in into some images that I have here. And I think we uh, went a little far back uh, in your history and your career. This photo that I have here of you is on a show that was in Puerto Rico. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yeah, that, um, that was uh, technically the first TV show I ever did. Uh, my dad was a producer, director, you know, kind of like the the ringmaster of that show and it was called uh que angelitos los angelitos mm -hmm. from puerto rico and it was during that you know classic uh menudo era uh carousel in mexico you know it was like the yeah. beginnings of of this uh this fever and um it was fun it was uh it's my first uh my beginnings <laughs> i saw the clip i mean i didn't know about that show and it was cool to see <laughs> you guys are kind of like it's a little bit of comedy as well at such a young oh, there's a lot of comedy. Yes, a lot of comedy. Um, my father, um, Elin Ortiz, obviously, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he was a master of comedy and he was really good at, um, you know, making sure his content, whether it's for, it was for children or uh, very politically charged, which were many of his TV shows, um, always had a sense of humor, you know, to, uh, to make sure that it was light enough for, I guess, the viewer, you know, and, and, and to, I guess, get the message come across a lot stronger in my opinion. Yeah, that's classic Latino humor, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely got the Manudo vibes with your hair. You, you Throughout all of your career, one thing I did notice is you always had like- Manudo hair. hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your hair has always been on point. So I have- Not always, uh, I've had my fails, but you know, I, I think- I think because I don't show them, <laughs> I keep I keep I keep those photos deep in my hard drives. Indeed, but uh, indeed, they're out there. They're indeed. out there. If if you dig in deep, you'll find you'll find uh, some uh, wacky choices. You know, but it's all good. <laughs> this is one that is you and your mom and your dad. I'm, it looks like you're home. I'm not sure if this if this photo was just a casual day or if it was a significant moment. I think. I think that was one of the classic, you know, like Vea magazines where it looks like a casual day, but it's like a five hour production to make everything look like that, you know? <laughs> it's one of those. I um, think it was one of those, like, let's pretend we're having a casual moment, but it's, <laughs> it's definitely not, not casual at all. Was this like, you think for a magazine or something? It looks like it was a magazine. For sure, see, for right? sure. That was, that, that has magazine written all over it. And it was a very 80s thing. Actually, it's still, uh -huh. it's still going on, you know? And I, uh -huh. I think it's part of the, the beauty of, uh, of, I think Latinos, I think in general, you see it in all kinds of media, but, uh, uh, you know, the whole like setting up and making it all look like it's yeah. all normal, but it takes forever. It's kind of cool, it's cute. The lifestyle. For those who may not know, you probably would not have to not be part of Latin culture to not know. Your family's like TV royalty, really. Your dad, Walter Mercado's life, he played a big role in a lot of artists' lives. He produced shows and your mother was basically an all-around artist as well. Can you share a little bit about the dynamic of growing up in that type of uh, family and what that meant well, for you? Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's um... It's interesting because it's, it's in one way it sounds out there, you know, and, and unconventional, but in another way, I think each one of us, our upbringing was what we consider normal, you know, and, yeah. and that was the case with me. Like to me, it was normal to have two parents in the industry and uh, be a TV producer and be an artist and be an actress and be a singer. Like that was normal to me. So, you know, in my case, I was always gravitated by it since I was very young because I was exposed to it at a very early age. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a secret to say that that's the reason I owe the, why I kept doing what I'm doing now, you know? And, and, and the reason I have the passion for it is because it was contagious to me, you know? And, and clearly to my brother and sister who are also in the business yeah. and they're also pursuing, you know, 
their own dreams and careers. So I think um, in our case, it was like a hijo de gato casa raton times three type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so you spoke about your siblings. Yeah, I know that you're both of your your siblings are in the industry, and and I believe you have twins also, if I'm not mistaken. I do, I do. They are twins. My brother and sister are twins. That was for Caras magazine. It was a Caras cover photo shoot, and that the photographer was uh, Omar Cruz. Oh, Omar Cruz, man, he's a legend. Omar Cruz is a legend, and Omar Cruz is the the guy responsible for my first uh, young adult photo shoot ever. He's the oh, one that, really? yeah, he was the man who I ever post uh, in my official, you know, um, yeah. 18 year old uh, young adult career, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. I know that we, we talked about you starting at a young age. I think you started at, at eight, uh, possibly in the television doing stuff. And so moving from you doing these skits on that show that your, your dad had produced, were you also singing or is this something that you knew that you knew how to do already or was it evolving as you kept experimenting in the arts? There was singing in, in Los Angelitos in the TV show I did. There was definitely musicals and singing, but you could argue if I was actually singing or not because I would just throw in a little verse, you know? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like we were having these solo songs, each one of us, like Menudo style, you know? Menudo was definitely more... Uh, performance oriented or singing oriented than, than Los Angelitos. But we did have our share of songs and that exposed me enough to also fall in love with that part of it. But in all truth, I learned how to sing or I learned how to train my instrument at a relatively late age. I was 16, I mean, 17, 18. That's when I started taking uh, voice classes with Jose Miguel Velasquez, who also became a producer on my first album. And uh, thanks to him, I was able to finally, you know, say, okay, I, I think if I work hard enough, I could um, have a shot at this. And, uh, and that was it, you know, I was like, uh, it was a little part experimental, my whole uh, singing and music career for myself. And then it just kept taking shape, you know, uh, later. Did you stop because you felt like, hey, I tried it and, and I'd rather pursue acting? Or did you stop for another reason? Record companies and the music industry were going through some very shady moments, you know? I mean, the MP3 was starting to take over the CD. Um, they didn't know if they were going to even exist, which clearly they foresaw their own future because yeah. now it's all about independent. Um, but back then, I was, I was discouraged. I was discouraged with the way the industry was uh, becoming and... Uh, you know, I'm, not, I'm also not going to lie. I wasn't, I wasn't a top five priority on my own record label because obviously they had legends, you know, uh, and I wasn't intending, I didn't intend to compete with them either, you know. So I don't know. I think it was just the perfect storm that led me to, to grab a plane and go back to L.A. And, and give acting, you know, a real young adult shot since I had already done a couple of little guest stars. Uh, yeah. I had already done a Lizzie McGuire for Disney and S Club mm -hmm. 7. So I had a little taste of LA and I just, it just felt right to just say, you know what, fuck it. You know, let's just, yeah. you know, give it a real shot. Let's do, let's do this right. You know, let's just, right. uh, and that's what I did in 2005, you know, and, uh, and I don't regret it. It was, uh, it was, it was one of the, those big steps in my life that changed my life. Well, I mean, I think it makes you all around artist because sometimes there's roles that come up in acting where they may want you to, to pull out on those vocals that you had. Oh, yeah. So I've talked to people that, I don't know if you've ever been interested in um, plays, like Broadway style. I know it's so different in the acting world. People kind of stay into what they, their forte. But I know people who have lost roles in Broadway, for example, because they don't have the, the vocal capability. I know, I know. And let me tell you one thing, man. Musicals are a different monster. I do not mm. intend to say that I will like grab a musical by the balls and and yeah. and kick ass. You know, I'll, yeah. I, I I I'm I'm not that cocky. You know, I really respect that that career. That's a completely different branch of arts. Right. You know, on its own. Uh, for example, Jose Guillermo Cortines, uh, my 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 great brother, who I shared this last single that we did together yeah. he's a master at musicals you know he's he, i mean he was uh you know he did les mis he did marius wow. les mis 
He did uh, Gaston of Beauty and the Beast, all in the Teatro Nacional in Dominican Republic. I mean, the guy is a beast. So um, wow. I, I, I really admire that world. But yeah, I mean, Broadway is one of my, you know, one, one day bucket list dreams. And uh, hopefully one day I'll, I'll live that too. Man, I believe it. You guys seem like you can do a little bit of everything. Uh, and to see, <laughs> seeing Latinos on, on any kind of platform in the arts is so important, especially these days. Don't forget to subscribe and 